Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to green and clean beauty. And I am back today with a full face of brand new Au Naturel products. So I'm gonna do the entire face using Au Naturel products. And a lot of these are new to me, so you're gonna see some first impressions, some tips, some tricks, things I loved, things I was like, not really totally in love with, but I need to try out a little bit further. And that's it. So if you wanna see how it all comes together, then stick around and let's get into it. Heads up, if you're going from toxic to non-toxic and have no clue where to start, check out my free green beauty guide back on the website. It's the one pager I wish I had when I first started out. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another one. All of the gifts from Au Natural that I received right in front of me. And I'm going to start with the concealer, which I have in the color Buff. It's their cream concealer. I do not have anything else on. I should probably put some type of lotion or something. I'm gonna do a primer. I'm gonna go with the Vapor Skin Perfector. Skin's been really dry for using something from Herbivore. It's just like thrown it all off. So but. primed, done, brows are already started because I didn't want to waste too much time on the brows here. Let's give this a shot. So it is a stick concealer. It gets a little buttery to the touch. For all the application, it feels okay. I think the primer's helping significantly. I was playing around with this before and it was sticking a little bit because it felt a little thicker and my skin has been very dry. So if you have oilier skin, this may be a little bit more your jam. Popping it on top of the lid. Here's what I'm seeing. Lighter to medium coverage here on the concealer. It is gliding on, it is not absorbing in, it's actually catching on top of the skin. Kind of a bummer. I'm gonna give it a second, press it in. I did read online that you can use your fingers here or a beauty blender might be a little bit more effective, but I can see just a little bit of sitting on top of the skin. I'm gonna pop it on the other eye real fast, see how that goes. Some descriptors for you for under eye coverage. Shade match is nice, it's not too light. It does press in and feel soft and not oily or greasy, but it definitely goes on smoothly. But in terms of coverage, it's sitting on top of the skin a little bit and it's not right now my most favorite concealer. Gotta be honest with you guys, I'm gonna try a spot treatment just on the chin, there's a little bit of redness. See how that works. Much better. Much, 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 much better. Okay. So at first glance for spot treatments and different areas that you might use it on your skin, say they're scarring or acne or something like that, I would again say that it's more of a light to medium coverage. It's not sitting on top right now, but let me try building really fast. Whoop. I have a little bit here. Let's see how the build works. It's building, but it's still showing signs that it's on my skin. It's not disappearing into the skin. Is it the worst I've seen? Far from it. Let's see about building under eye. Yeah, I think it builds on top to provide more medium to full coverage, but little spots of sitting on top. And I'm a huge fan of things going on and disappearing into the skin. So this is not this is not that right now. I'm gonna give it a second. I think if I set it with a powder, it would not be good. First impression on the concealer, it would have won me over if it absorbed fully into the skin and it's just not doing that. Bummer, there's still plenty of products to continue to try. So now I'm gonna try the cream foundation. And I have this in Merino, also a stick foundation. I haven't been using these lately, but I still love the Well People one. Based on what I know from the concealer, I'm going to try a concealer brush, Sigma foundation brush. Well, it's a foundation brush. Duh, I said concealer. I'm gonna try a foundation brush for the foundation and see how this applies. Evening out really well. Very lightweight. And... Hello guys. It's settling into my pores again. I'm a stickler for this. I love the creamy consistency. I do like that it is evening out, but up close, my skin, almost looks like it has little white dots on it. Now, I saw reviews online for this and they were stellar. Maybe it's just my skin, but I, yeah, it's sitting on top, definitely sitting on top. I like the color, but I'm just trying to say nice, <laughs> nice things with the not so nice things, as you guys know that I'm gonna be really honest. So on the bridge of the nose, see how this performs. That's a tricky part for me, I'm not sure why. For instance, like I'll take the RMS on cover up and it'll just sort of press in and set it and it's, you know, no one's the wiser that I've put something on my face. It really looks very natural. This is cooling and not 
not not working for me. It really is just doing the thing where there's just white marks, which are essentially my pores, which are pretty small. The product is settling into them, and I have a primer on, which I've never experienced that with this primer before, other foundations. So overall, with the foundation stick and the concealer, these are not my favorite, not because of coverage or texture or ingredients, but because they are not disappearing into my skin. I have plenty more to try, probably not my favorite base, but I do have a semi-matte powder foundation that I will give a whirl, which is the porcelain shade. So that might be the foundation way to go for me. So we'll see, let's give that a go. We shall. Use a big mama brush, large powder brush F20 Sigma. Give this a shot. So we have cool little netting. Tap it a little. Seems, oh boy, okay. So this really, I think a little bit goes a long way here. So I'm gonna do it with a mirror close up here. Let's see how it goes. Oh wow, okay. Now we're talking. This powder foundation has given me more coverage in one little light swipe and the stick foundation that I've tried it is not sitting on top, it's not looking cakey. You can see pretty quickly, I think, on the video. This might be the way that I would go if I were doing foundation from Au Naturel. Let's try it on the forehead. And a little bit goes a long way here. Wider brush, I think, is the way to go for me. It gets a little bit more surface area, and I don't want it to be too cakey in one spot. I don't want too much product to deposit in one area. The shade is a tad light, but like really, it's still pretty great. You can put bronzer on and be fine with it. Let's just take a quick look close up at the skin. Yeah, so the concealer is definitely bubbling up a little bit to the surface. The powder is doing a great job. I think the powder foundation, the semi-matte, is the way to go. If you have more oily skin, this could be really nice for you. The stick foundation works better if you have oilier skin too, possibly, in the sense that it might disappear a little bit better. I don't know, I'm not sure. If you've tried this and you've loved the stick foundation, please leave a comment below and let us know why you love it, what type of skin you have, so people can have the comparison because like, it's certainly not all about just my combination skin type. So thank you for that. I really, really like this semi-matte powder. Really strong powder, and it's probably one of the more fuller coverage powders that I've tried in terms of foundations. So cool, yay, winning there. And in a way, like, I don't really think I need to set. It's like, try not to. Sometimes I love to do the trick where you can use the foundation powder to just try and set everything. Because why do you need another setting powder on top of this powder? Unless it's really sheer, sheer, sheer. Oh, I love share. I'm gonna say that I've set everything. It's still a little bit tacky here. Normally I would put a little bit of unpowder from RMS there or crunchy or something like that, like a translucent powder. And I do have something, this was the medium. It gave me a skin kit, which has multiple stackable options in there. So you can try a bunch of different foundations, which I think is a fantastic thing to offer. So love that they do this. I have a finishing powder here. I'm a little scared to use that on top of this concealer because I think it's just gonna catch Oh lord. Further These powders are they mean business. Got a little bit of this finishing powder. I want to tap it. And then we'll just try it on top. Nice. Finishing powder is nice. Not seeing a huge difference between that and then just setting it with the foundation, except for the fact that it takes away the tackiness of the concealer underneath. So overall finishing powder. I don't know if it's pearlizing or anything like that. I'm not seeing any of that, which is good because I just put it under my eyes, so I don't really want that. Overall, pretty solid. Let's dive into the, I have the bronzer here, which looks so metallic. Also have another option of bronzer in here, but I'm not gonna use it. So I'm just gonna stick to the full size there. I'm gonna go for the eyes. I don't have an eyeliner from Au Naturel. So, I, mean, I do have an eyeliner, but it's super duper bright blue. Really cool, fun. I did this for their Earth Day campaign. I don't know if that's gonna work for this look. Hmm, mm -mm. it won't. I'm gonna go in with the Cream Shadow in Addiction. It's this really cool color. It's like a, almost a cross between an olive and this like patina chrome color. It's almost like a metallic olive color. I'm really loving, so that's, that's that. It's so cool. I'm just gonna use my finger as per the norm and dab it onto the lid. Just press it in and see how this goes. 
setting it is going to help prevent creasing but oftentimes cream shadow will just naturally crease in the middle of the day i'll just stop and press really quickly with clean hands and that just seems to get all the creases out easy peasy pretty nice great color payoff really lightweight too which is great for cream it's not like a heavy creamy situation i think that that's going to help this last but there's still some huge color payoff this is fantastic, you guys. Their cream shadows, really nice. If you're into that kind of thing. And I never was, but this might change my mind. There you go. Just easy, dab it on. If I wanted to create some type of liner, I could use an angled brush and just put that in here and then swoop it on towards the ends. Oh God, that's my eyebrow pencil. Yep. Bad, 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 bad. The other end of this Makeup Forever smudge stick which is this little rounded brush. And I'm just gonna try and get as much product as I possibly can on there. Just go in to where I would normally wing it. Get it, wing it, got it. <laughs> just build on top of the color that's already there. Pretend like this is kind of a shadow, a cream shadow as an eyeliner. So it's very subtle, but it is elongating the eye without me having to put an extra amount of eyeliner on there, which is kind of fun. And you could put it underneath for night. I think that would also be a cool option. That was easy enough to do. I'm just gonna do it along the edges. This is building nicely on top of itself. Soft, subtle, easy, great eyeshadow. Love, love, love this cream eyeshadow. It came in some really fun colors too. So next I'm going to go in with their mascara. So I have their mascara in black. As one does, I'm gonna go in without primer and see how it performs. It has this little brush, smaller bristles, depositing plenty of product across the lashes. Pretty evenly, a little bit of clumping. Might have had a lot on the actual brush. If you glide the wand through it, it just kind of takes those little clumps out. Different than those bigger clumps, you know, that you have to like get in there with. That's not happening, it's just I think brand new. It's doing its little thing. It's working itself out. Sometimes mascaras just work better after a few tries for me. Is that just me? I don't know. Really nice. Really subtle. Very subtle, lightweight formula. It's not super lengthening. I would say it's to the volume side of things a little bit more than it is lengthening. It's doing that really well. Not separating out the lashes. I don't like when they do that because then I feel like it looks like I have fewer lashes. It's really adding to that volume nicely. It is clumping a little bit on the second application, especially when I apply it to my face. Yay. On the other side loads up a little bit on the lashes. I like to apply a lot of extra to the outer lashes. Overall, really nice. Yeah, it's a little, a little clumpy. This will show you what I mean. Do you see this? Formula is really nice except for it clumps a little bit, so I wouldn't use too much of a primer. I usually never say that. I'm usually very pro primer, but I don't think you need it with this mascara. Make sure that you keep kind of layering and then wiggling through and those little clumps will come out. It's not my favorite thing to see on a brand new stick of mascara, but the effect is pretty magical. I'm really liking it actually. Doing a great job. So we've got mascara. Let's do bronzer. Let's do bronzer. I have it in golden henna and it looks like rose gold times a million. This should be interesting. Oh boy, this is metallic. If you are looking for a non-metallic bronzer, try a different color that they have. They do have other bronzer options that are less metallic, but this is pretty fun. Here we go. Try not to put too much on. Pretty, it's like a lighter shade for me. Usually go into the darker shades. It really is a nice honey color. Honey, rose, kind of pink champagne color, really pretty for summer. Kind of love it, kind of surprised, not gonna lie. I was a little nervous, if you couldn't tell. Nice, really nice. Wow, it is definitely metallic on the metallic side. It will settle a bit into fine lines. This is the kind of bronzer that I probably wouldn't put too much on the forehead because it'll just settle into the fine lines. Overall, it's just kind of like beautiful honey, honey glow of a bronzer, which I'm kind of digging right now. It warmed it up, but it's not too much. So I think if you have fair skin tones, this would be really helpful for you. Then there is a blush in here that I'm gonna look at is this blush. What are you? Pomegranate blush. Why not? How do I say this? What is this? This is kind of like a, I don't know. Also, th this is frustrating because like I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> 
Okay, so I kind of like these containers and I kind of don't like these containers. Just try and get it out with this little brush. Let's see. Whoa, love it. Love pomegranate, you guys. Really good color. It is more on the softer pink side. It has, it's almost like a muted ballet slipper pink. Does that make sense? Rosier, corally, just really, really pretty. It's not that bright pink. If you're looking for it, it's not gonna give you that. It's beautiful. It applied really nicely. So that might be one of my favorites from the group. Just saying. Speaking of my lips, my lips, my lips. So I am going, oh, I also have this same blush from Palermo. Not from Palermo, Cream Blush Multi Stick in color Palermo. This I have used already. I really like this. I've used this on the lips. You can use this for blush. I actually really like it for eyes. I'm a big fan. So I just wanted to give this one a little shout out. If you're looking for that coral kind of sunset vibe, the Palermo color for the Multi Stick is gonna be good. And plus you can just like pop it in your bag and use it a bunch of different ways. So this is the lip oil in Cassis. I've been really curious about this because it's gotten great reviews. So here we go. It's like, mm, smells like a grape, which I like. And interesting, feels amazing, okay? Feels great. I have tried this a little bit. It feels wonderful, the texture is wonderful, it's not greasy. It almost feels like there's a little bit of oil slick left on your lips, but it's not tacky in any way, and it's not too shiny. Color is very muted, it's basically not there. It's definitely a tint, and I'm finding that it's sort of settling into the corners of my lip, which is kind of weird. I don't usually experience that. That's currently happening. So I do have the Au Natural Sustain and Kawaii. I think I've had this in a Get Ready With Me. This is like super saturated, so this is a really fun color. So I just wanna put a thin layer of the Sustain on top. Everything smells like a berry right now. It's kind of magical. It's kind of fantastic. Uh, it's, it's a little uneven. Sustain is making things look a little uneven on me. I have no idea why. Powder foundation, by the way, is holding up. I had one more thing from Au Natural that I wanted to try. It's the lipstick in Innocence, so let's give this a shot and see if this sort of just pulls it all together. It's a really pretty raspberry color. And it's glossy. This is supposed to be all day wear, so we'll see. You know how they make these claims. And sometimes they're absolutely true. That's why I test. Okay, do you see, there's like a little smudginess happening here. I'm nitpicking, but I think that's because of the oil. Maybe the oil is better on its own and maybe I would just try and get a lighter shade. And then the Sustain, I love. I love that. New formula is great. My favorite, however, is the lipstick in Innocence by far. I like the color, I like the application, and that's all I have to say about that. And there you have it. That is my full face of Au Natural featuring a bunch of new products for me. Winners of the bunch would be the cream eyeshadow. Loved it. I think the Palermo Multi Stick is amazing. Foundation, fantastic for full coverage. A little bit goes a long way, don't forget that. Then the bronzer, if you're looking for metallic. Also, the blush that I tried from this little kit, standout blush, just a really beautiful shade that I haven't seen a lot of, and it applied really well for a loose powder. And I like the Sustain, which I've already talked about on the channel, but it's honorable mention. My maybes, oh, and the um, Innocence lipstick sample that I have, really, really good. My kind of like, I'm not sure yet, are the lip oil, Cease, and the mascara. I really like this mascara. I like the end product. I just am worried about the clumps. So let me know if you've tried this too. I kind of want to know. But at the end of it, after it's all put on, it looks really good and it feels great. Just the clumping, you know? So that's why it's like in the middle. And then on the lower end of all this, for whatever the reason may be, I just did not, like my skin did not get along well with the concealer or the cream foundation stick. So if you've tried those, I know a lot of people have and I know a lot of people love them. Definitely reach out with your tips and your tricks on how they work best because I am all ears. Here you go. This is the final look, you guys. This is it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys right back here real soon. Until then, bye.